So I found a story about a pastor that was heading into church one Sunday morning and he realized that in his rush he had forgotten his false teeth. <laughs> And so uh, when he arrived at the office, he phoned back home and talked to his wife because she was still there. And he says, you, you've got to help me. Could you please bring me my teeth? Well, she did. And right before the pastor walked up on stage, he uh, was handed the teeth and he stuck them in his mouth and he went up and began to give his sermon. Well, the sermon went on. 30 minutes went by. 45 minutes went by, then he reached an hour, and you could tell the whole audience, they were kind of getting a little antsy and a little nervous, you know, this was kind of getting long, much longer than they were used to. And the room was just kind of squirmy, and the pastor just kept going, kept preaching. Finally, after an hour and a half, he finished his sermon, and he let the people go. And on his way out, one of the board members came up to him and says, Wow, Pastor, that was a pretty long sermon today you had. The pastor replied, Yeah, I'm real sorry about that, but this morning I actually put in my wife's teeth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a rough crowd this morning. <laughs> um. Actually, my portion of the sermon today is going to be really short. Uh, I want to do something different and uh, share with you a video. Now, sharing a video is not necessarily that much different. We do that a lot. Uh, a lot of maybe short little funny videos or maybe an illustration video. But this morning, I want to do something different because the bulk of the teaching is going to come from a video that we want to share. Um, relax, settle in, kind of get, get ready for a, for, for a program because it's 14 minutes long, so it's longer than we might normally show on a, on a Sunday morning. But it uh, showcases some things that a church in Tacoma is doing. And uh, I don't want to introduce them, at least uh, what they're doing, and a little bit about why we want to show it this morning. Um, the name of the church is called Soma. Tacoma. Soma stands for body. And they are in Tacoma. And uh, it's a church of what they call missional communities. Uh, these are communities of people that are gathering together. They're meeting together for fellowship, for prayer, for Bible study, and to be on mission with their lives in their community, in their neighborhood, or in different, different ways. Different communities have different looks. Different communities have uh, maybe a different feel to them, and they uh, do different things. But they recognize the goal of their communities is to be on mission for Jesus Christ where they live. In fact, the op in the opening interview of the video, Pastor Jeff Vanderstelt uh, asked this question, and this is really kind of what I want you to hear this question, and I hope you wrestle with this question day and night. My prayer is that you cannot sleep tonight because you're wrestling with this question. I think it's that important. He, he opens up the question and he says, for them in their church, he says, what would it look like to live like missionaries here instead of thinking that missionaries are only someone that goes somewhere else? Right. I mean, what would it look like if we lived our lives as missionaries right here? I think it's a great question. Matthew chapter 28. Jesus had come. He had led his disciples and been teaching them for the last year, two years, maybe a little more. He had performed miracles and uh, had set up his, um, begun the process at least of setting up his kingdom and went to the cross to die for our sins and then rose from the grave. Showing his power, uh, his resurrection power over life and death. Now then, over the next, after that resurrection time, there was a period of a month and a half or so where he showed himself and he taught some more things and he was preparing them and, and essentially said to them, in that very last interaction that they had, now I'm, I'm leaving, I'm taking off. My mission, my ministry, my time is done. And I turn it over to you. 
I want you to do the things that I did. I want you to continue the work that I began. I want you to pick up the mission and in verse 20, uh, excuse me, verse, uh, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, he says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now we've taken Jesus' command of go and make disciples, and we've turned it around to say, come to church. And we can easily think that the end goal, boy, we can really make a good Christian if we can just get them to come to church on Sundays and maybe Bible study during the week. Those are the committed ones. Those are the ones that are really living for Jesus. I mean, I don't know, in the church mindset from a leadership point of view, oftentimes that's the things that we measure. How many people have gathered on Sunday morning? How many people are in Bible study? How many people are in small groups? How many people are leading in some area? I mean, those are the things that we measure and the things that we tend to look at. But Jesus looked at, Jesus called us to a life that was so different. And then actually the calling is so much more. You know, if we were to be honest for just a minute, can we do that just to, for, for a minute? Because we are in church, it'd probably be a good idea. For, for some of us, we ask for that, we ask for that commitment of, an, uh, you know, of Sunday morning and, and maybe Bible study. And it seems like a big ask. If we could get two or three hours out of a person's life, that seems like quite a, or, you know, out of a person's week, rather. That seems like a pretty big deal. And yet, for a lot of us, we probably like our Christian experience to be like that. Because it's fairly predictable. It's fairly comfortable. It's, it's um, uh, full of a lot of comfort, comfortabilities and expectancies. I mean, after all, if the service starts going 10 or 15 minutes late, we start, you know, getting a little worked up ourselves. I mean, we, we, you know, we've, we're meeting people for lunch. I've got things to go do. I want to get some shopping done. I've got other things happening. I mean, I need, I need that thing to stick to its time slot because... You know, I got other things going on. And I, I do understand that. I, I have things, other things planned out this afternoon. And, I, and, I, and I'm saying that sitting in church is not the big deal. That prepares us for the big deal. But how are we going to react when life gets interrupted by the needs of Jesus? In fact, Wednesday night we had that little um, ministry workshop. And one of the phrases that comes to mind uh, was from our speaker, uh, Morris. He's a business leader. And he talked about how oftentimes people will come into his office and, and uh, he'll talk with them. And, and, and he loves when he gets the opportunity to, to share with them and maybe pray with them and particularly uh, share Jesus with them. But he, he, said this little, he said this little sentence, and, and the way it came out, I just thought it was so funny, but it, it was so profound. He just said, you know, he sees somebody walking into his office, and oftentimes he, fe he finds himself saying to God, okay, God, this guy must be coming in here for you, because I know I sure don't need him right now. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to respond when Christ needs us at a time that's not so convenient? I mean, it's kind of nice when Bible study sticks within the 7 to 8 o'clock time span. But what do you do when the neighbor shows up and they want to talk about their marriage till 1 o'clock in the morning because they're in real trouble? Living our lives as a missionary for Jesus Christ could be a higher challenge than any of you have ever thought of in your life before. And yet Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. That's what he said is the mission and the purpose of your life after coming to know him. 
So this little video um, just talks about a, a little bit of how they're doing that. Um, I, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it challenges you in some way. If nothing else, I hope you get kind of the sense or the feeling of their passion for being on mission with their life. And then I'll close it off at the end and we'll be done for today. So if we could catch all the lights, the stage. look like to um, what would it look like to live like missionaries here instead of thinking that missionaries only go somewhere else and to live that kind of life uh, last week we showed a little video about um, offering to you the opportunity to take a picture of maybe a place that you are involved. Maybe it's a place you like to eat or it's some group that you're a part of or maybe you think of your workplace um, as your mission field. Wherever you're already uh, situated, take a picture of some kind that would represent that and get it to us. You can email, text, um, bring it in in hard copy. and um, But just to celebrate that and, and during that video one of the one of the little pictures in there was Annie's Hillside Cafe. And it's a place that we like to go eat. And we just decided that if we're going to go out and eat during the week, we'll just meet there. We'll just make that our place. And um, the purpose for that is to get to know the people there. And we've started that process. And have started to get to know them. And, and of course, Annie, the owner, she comes in here quite often. And she has a new project that she's working on, and she asked if we would meet with her and just pray with her and her husband about their new adventure. And so just the process of just the taking the time to, to, to eat there and to spend time with them, to get to know people, um, suddenly we were given an invitation we weren't expecting to gather with her and her husband and pray with them about the important things going on in their life. And this relationship is starting to emerge. This opportunity to speak for Jesus is beginning um, to extend. It's beginning to, to come out. And we want to take that opportunity and continue to allow it to grow and do that in other areas of our life as well. This series, just in closing, is called Risk. And living for Jesus is the greatest risk in all of life. Um, to use your life for His purposes, in His reasons, to build His kingdom. As Pastor Jeff was saying as he closed, and you could just kind of hear his heart for those that don't know Christ, His city that's lost, and to... I, I sense that so many times when we're at some event or just at the mall or, or walking down the street and there's like all these masses of people and I just think, I know that there's so many of them walking along that don't know Jesus. And they don't know the love that God has for them. They don't have the hope of eternity with Christ. And Lord, what could I do? What, how could I live different? How could I reorient my life in such a way that I could be more available to you in sharing that message to others? Um, I tell you, I tend to be a busy guy with lots of things going on. And just because I'm working at a church doesn't mean I have all kinds of times to go out and talk to people about the gospel. Um, maybe it's quite the opposite. It's very easy to get trapped in an office. It's very easy to get stuck in, in my own set of meetings and studies and conversations and, and, uh, and all the, and the business end of the church and all that. How can I reorient my life to be on mission for Jesus Christ? And once again, I want to ask you to take the risk to find ways to do that. Let's pray. Father, we